Hey guys, my name is Minas and today I'm going to be talking about the embryological development of the thyroid. I recommend before watching this video that you watch my previous video on the embryological development of the pharyngeal clefts and pouches because it'll help you understand this video much better. But I've made this video again in a way that'll help you understand it even if you haven't watched any videos before and you're new to embryology. Okay, as usual, let's begin at the beginning where we have a blastula. The blastula is a result of an egg and a sperm fusing, moving down the uterine tube, and it'll implant onto the uterine wall like this. Initially, everyone was three layers. An external layer called the ectoderm, a middle layer called the mesoderm, and an inner layer called the endoderm. And this is a flat disc stuck to the uterine wall. This is a simplification for this, where we have ectoderm in blue, mesoderm in red, and endoderm in green. The ectoderm will become skin and nervous tissue. The mesoderm is made out of three components, the paraxial mesoderm, which becomes somites, muscles, the intermediate mesoderm, which become gonads and kidneys, and the lateral plates. And then the endoderm is essentially your gut, your gastrointestinal tube. Eventually what will happen is that this will fold and the ectoderm will surround everything else and become skin. And as well, the endoderm will become a tube like your gastrointestinal tract is and the mesoderm will be mostly your organs. Okay, that's the bare minimum which everyone should know. And a quick introduction to embryology. Now let's start talking about the thyroid. Have a look at this week three embryo where this is the head and this is the tail and we have pharyngeal arches here. We're gonna slice it this way and look this way and we're gonna have this where we'll see the pharyngeal arches, one over here which becomes the tongue and over here between pouch one and pouch two there is a small diverticulum and this is essentially where the thyroid comes from. So the thyroid is developed from the midline at the level of the foramen cecum. So that's the first thing you should know. Foramen cecum between the anterior part of the tongue and the, and the posterior part of the tongue. It's the foramen cecum and that's where the thyroid originates from. It's originally endodermal tissue. So from this green bit, originally endodermal tissue. And that eventually will invade into the mesoderm, going down as a thyroid diverticulum. And this happens at about day 25, week 4. So this at the th foramen cecum, the thyroid diverticulum penetrates down into the mesoderm and begins its development. Okay, so let's have a look at over this part here. These are the pharyngeal arches. So where this was a slice like this, looking that way, this is a cut down through the pharyngeal arches. And this little bit has been magnified to represent all of this. The thyroid originates here. This is the front bit of your tongue, the anterior two thirds of your tongue. This will be a posterior third of the tongue. And this is the foramen cecum, where some endodermal tissue will penetrate down into mesoderm, and that's where the thyroid begins to be made. Okay. Let's just have a look at this part here, where we're going to outline the actual path of the thyroid. So this is a section of the head like this, looking this way, where we have the lips, and the tongue here in blue. Over here, this dip is the foramen cecum, and in thick black, we have the path of the thyroid as shown by the thyroglossal duct. Okay, so the thyroglossal duct pulls the thyroid from the foramen cecum down all the way to its final position in front of the first two tracheal rings. Okay. So quick summary, thyroid begins as a mass of endodermal tissue at the foramen cecum and it grows down into the mesoderm 
it follows a path around, goes under the hyoid bone, and eventually ends up in front of the trachea. Okay. As the thyroid moves down from the foramen cecum to its final position in front of the trachea, it proliferates. And this proliferation makes the mass of cells become two thyroid thyroid lobes, the left and the right, and in 50% of people, an extra lobe, the pyramidal lobe, will be evident. In its final position, it'll also have grown an isthmus, which connects the left and right lobes, and the pyramidal lobe, which is at the midline in 50% of people. Okay. The thyroid grows or moves in front of the pharyngeal gut so if we look at this week five section of the embryo at the foramen cecum the thyroid epi uh, grows from endoderm penetrates the mesoderm and this being the pharyngeal gut with that being the trachea and that the, the future esophagus it moves this way in front of the pharyngeal gut and epiglottis okay by the end of the third month, the thyroid is functioning, producing colloid, and you can even, even see some thyroxin being produced. It's also important to know the relationship of the thyroid to the parathyroid and the other structures from the pharyngeal pouches. Now you're probably looking at this and wondering, that looks like an alien. This, I don't know what this is. But don't let it worry you. This is pretty much this, but further developed. So these are the pharyngeal pouches. And if you want to understand this image a bit more, watch the previous video on the pharyngeal clefts and pouches. You'll guarantee to understand what's going on. From the third pharyngeal pouch, we have inferior parathyroid and thymus being produced and the thymus being produced. So, as the thymus moves down, it pulls the inferior parathyroid down, disconnecting from the mes mesenchyme, and its path actually meets the thyroid as it descends down into its final position. And for this reason, the inferior parathyroid glands, because they have to tra traverse such a long distance, as compared to the superior parathyroids, they're more likely to be in a different position each time. So they have highly variable positions on the back of the thyroid, if they even reach the back of the thyroid. So again, as the thyroid descends, the inferior parathyroids detach from the pouches and try and go at the bottom of the dorsal surface of the thyroid. Likewise, at pouch four, we have superior parathyroid hormone, uh, sorry, parathyroid gland. They detach from the wall and try and hit the thyroid as it's moving down from the thyroglossal duct at the top part of its dorsal surface. Okay. So inferior and superior parathyroid hormone, uh, glands come from uh, pouch three and four respectively. But the thyroid tissue isn't completely from endoderm at the pharynx. From the pharyngeal pouches, we also have the ultima branchial body. That contributes parafollicular cells or the C cells. So not only do the inferior and superior parathyroid glands detach from the wall and try and find the thyroid as it descends, but the ultima branchial body, otherwise known as the, para, the future parafollicular cells, the C cells, also detach and join the thyroid as it descends into its final position in front of the first tracheal rings. Okay, so what you need to know is that thyroid develops from foramen cecum as an outpouching called the thyroid diverticulum. It follows a path that moves in front of the 
trachea in front of the pharyngi pharyngeal gut. It moves around the hyoid bone into its final position in front of the two, first two tracheal rings. It's made up of pharyngeal pouch as well as endoderm. The pharyngeal pouch components are the ultimate branchial body, which are the calcitonin secreting C cells or the parafollicular cells, and the inferior parathyroid and superior parathyroids detach from the pouch tissue and try and hit the back of the thyroid as it's moving down. And this is why we can get ectopic tissue or, in, or parathyroid uh, glands in various positions anywhere around in the neck. Okay, that's the end of this uh, discussion on the development of the thyroid. There are some uh, congenital malformations which can occur. You can have remnants of the thyroglossal duct. So in a normal situation, the thyroglossal duct will obliterate. It won't be present in the baby or in an adult. You can have thyroglossal cysts or sinuses, which can present as a midline neck lump, which will move with swallowing and with protrusion of the tongue. And you can also have ectopic thyroid glands or tissue. And that makes sense because of the long distance that the thyroid has to travel from its beginning as the foramen cecum all the way down in front of the trachea. So the more something moves, the more something can be left behind or something can go wrong. Okay, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment and or you can join the Facebook group and leave a message or a post and we'll be glad to reply to that. Thank you.